I tend to make pretty simple models, um, being a relative beginner, as I've said many times. And so I'm going to show you how I modeled this refrigerator. All right, so here we can see a front view of the basic you know, shape of the refrigerator with the freezer and the main door there. A bit of a grill down there and some feet. And in the back, um, I just did sort of this, this panel uh, at the back with some bolts. So there could be put a lot more detail back there. I really didn't get in behind my refrigerator to look at that though. And uh, inside, <coughs> we can see, you know, we've got some trays here for the where the uh, supplies would go. And on the back of the door, we've got some other stuff there. We've got some bins down here for the, for the fruits and vegetables. And uh, inside here, we got the, you know, sort of like a little computer part where you control the control refrigerator. And just another view of it. I'm not sure I'm gonna do this little egg crate thing. And just another view now, you can see into the freezer, you know, this part here where you'd put some some, I don't know, make bread or frozen bread or milk bags, whatever you want to put in there, and that kind of thing. So it is uh, very straightforward, and uh, I'll go through uh, showing you how, how I modeled that, all right? So here I am in Blender 2.76. Again, I haven't updated for quite a long time, and I don't have a lot of time to model anyhow with my daughter. <clears throat> so I am in the uh, default scene, uh, and what I'll do is I'm going to select the camera, all right. Now, one thing I should say is I've switched in the user preferences. I've switched so that a left, a left click, is what I use to select things. It's more, much more familiar with the typical uh, Windows or whatever um, keys. Shift and click the light, and I'm going to hit X and delete. And just notice that my screencast keys are on down here. If you want to see what I'm doing, <clears throat> I now have the default cube right there. I'm going to hold Control and pull on the Z arrow and just bring it up. So it looks like it's sort of resting on the on the floor, but I'm going to hit N to open this side panel here, and I'm going to come up to display, and I'm going to actually turn off the grid floor. But we still have these axes indicators, so we get a sense that it's on the floor. I'm also going to come down to Mat Cap, and I'm going to choose Ambient Occlusion, and I'm going to choose this uh, Mat Cap shader. Right, hit N to close that. All right, so here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've all we're all a little sick. Um, I want to increase the height of this so it looks a little bit more like a refrigerator. Um, so I'm going to hit Tab, and that's going to bring up my menu that I use to get into edit mode. But of course, you can um, escape from that. You can choose edit mode down here as well. And then Control Tab is what you use to bring up the mesh select mode, or you can do it down here. You can choose vertex, edge, face. All right. I tend to like to go, uh, if I remember, Control Tab and and choose face, and select this top face by clicking on it. And I want to bring this up, so I'm just going to click on this left arrow, on this uh, blue arrow in the Z direction, and I'm going to pull up until it sort of it looks like. A refrigerator all right not doing this to any particular size or specifications just uh, doing our thing okay so I'm deselecting and I'm going to go back into object mode all right again you could do that from edit mode here you could click here and go object mode now I want to bevel this essentially rounding these very sharp corners all right but before I do that um, and I should note I'm not going to just come over here to the modifiers and add a bevel modifier I could do that I want to bevel it by hand so I have more control um, and in order to do that quite well because I've changed the size of this the scale I'm going to come down here to where it says object apply scale I'm going to be doing that quite frequently all right so you'll get used to seeing me do that going back into edit mode and now I'm going to go control tab and bring up the edge selection just turn that out of the way a little bit and I'm going to select and hold down shift and select all of these vertical edges around the side. Now to manually bevel I'm going to hit the control um, button and press B. Control B and now you can see a cross with a dotted line um, going into the center of the, of the object. I'm now going to just pull my mouse away so I'm pulling to the right and that starts to do that. You see that blue area is going to show you where the bevel is going to occur. So I'm going to pull it to about maybe maybe there and then I'm going to roll my mouse up and each time I roll my mouse up I'll get another set segment another edge whatever 
So I'm going to do this twice, and then I'm going to hit the left mouse button to confirm that. Hit A to deselect. And I'll, I'll go back in object mode and I'll show you how nicely that rounded those sides. But I now need to do the top and the bottom because I don't want that sharp edge on my refrigerator. Back into edit mode and I'm going to Alt Shift. So if I just go Shift and I click that or, I, or just click it in general, uh, I'm only going to get that edge there. So I'm going to go Shift and Alt and I'll get all of the edges which will also you know, make that blue as well. Come down, Shift Alt, and get all of those. So I've got the top and the bottom selected. I'm coming a little closer so you can see this. And I'm gonna bevel this again. So Control B, pull my mouse away from the center. So I get something like that. Sort of a similar thickness to the thickness I had here. Okay, so pull away. Not too much or you'll start getting things crossing. Just like that. Roll my mouse up to and that did the top and the bottom. <clears throat> so let's have a look at that. Okay, so it's nicely it's nicely beveled now. Okay, now one and hit five for ortho is the front view. I can also, by the way, set the origin to geometry. That pops the origin right back into the middle. Now my three D cursor is still at the center of the stage there. Let's call it. But the, my, the origin here, so wherever I manipulate from, is going to be right in the middle. In this case of my object, in the middle, because all the mass is equally on all sides, or top and bottom, whatever. Um, now, this is, uh, I'm, that's the front view, so I'm going to go three and go to the right side. And is that what I wanted to do? No, yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, if this is my main refrigerator, the first thing I want to do next, or the next thing I want to do is I want to create the door for the freezer and for the, the main part of the fridge. All right, And I want those to have a similar bevel. So I'm not going to create them again. I'm going to use this piece to create both of those doors. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to go Shift D and left mouse button to accept. Now there is a copy right here. I just pulled it away. It's the exact same thing. All right. And I am now going to use this to create uh, the doors. Now, if I just scale this now, make it thinner, let's say. All right, let's say the front is right here. We're looking at the side. This is the side of it. Okay, the right side. If this is the front and I want these to be thinner, this is the Y direction. If I want to make this thinner in the Y, then I go like this, S for scale, and then press Y on the keyboard. So S, Y and I pull in, I can do that, but the bevels here really shrink down. See the way it's a big wide bevel here, and don't worry about the fact that it's faceted, and you know I can smooth that later if I want to. I don't like that effect, but I do want them thinner. So I'm gonna control Z to come out of that. The way that you can solve this instead is to go into the object, go back, tab, into edit mode, and I am going to shrink it a different way. So I'm going to hit Z to bring up my uh, this menu, and I'm going to choose Wireframe. And I'm also going to go Control Tab and choose Vertex. I want to see my vertices. Now I could have done that down here, face, edge, that. The reason I've done that is because now I can box select, which means hitting the B button and you draw it a rectangle. Now I'll deselect, I'll do that again. Box selecting, hit the B key, and you get this square. Hold down the left mouse button and box around. If I just box there, I just get that. But if I go here, now the reason I'm doing this in wireframe, by the way, is because when I do it in wireframe, I not only get all of these points, but I get the ones in behind. I'll show you what happens if I look on the, on the side and I don't uh, use wireframe. I'm gonna hit uh, Z and go back to solid view. All right, this is just in edit mode here. I'll come right out, all right? Let's edit this. Edit mode, box select, turn using the middle mouse button. See, I only got those ones. I would screw everything up. So, back to three, back to wireframe. Now, box select all these vertices, pull them in to the approximate thickness of the door that I would like, let's say there, 
All right, I can adjust this again. Deselect, hit the Z key, go back to solid, and out into object mode. Now, notice that the bevel is still there. All right, so I get this nice bevel panel, which is, you know, just a, a copy of this, thinner than this. Now, well, that's, that's not a bad thickness, maybe a little bit thinner. All right, so let's practice. Go to the side view again, three, oops. <clears throat> Select the object, tab into edit mode. Don't forget wireframe. Box select. Only get these front ones. Zoom in if you need to. All right. Pull it a bit closer. Just don't have those overlapping. Maybe, maybe we'll come to there. Oops. That's fine. Solid view. Let me see if I like that. Yeah, that looks great. Now, there is something else I'd like to do, though. I, I like the front curvature, but because this piece here, and another thing I should do is you'll notice my origin is way over here, and there's my object, my door. That's because it started in the middle and, and it extended out to here. I now pulled it in, but the origin is still stuck there. So go set origin to geometry. It'll pop right back into the, you know, the middle of my object there. Now, imagine this is the door and it's very, very close to there. I don't really like the roundness on this side where it's supposed to close the refrigerator door. I kind of want this one nicely rounded, but this one flatter. It's just a personal you know, thing. So uh, I can work on that and I'll show you how I would do that. All right, I'm gonna go into edit mode again, wireframe. And uh, now I am going to box select as best I can all of these vertices that were part of this curve here. Now, let me go up and see if I got anything weird. No, that's fine. All of these vertices were part of the right side of this door and all these were part of the left side, the, the side that's gonna go against the refrigerator. I am going to um, scale these in, all right? So I'm going to go scale in the Y I'm going to pull, and, the, and it's flattening them out. I don't want them perfectly flat. I'm going to do that, and then I might pull them in a little bit more. Let's see if that's what I wanted to do. Back into object mode. Okay, let's come up here. Deselect. All right, you can see that the bevel is longer here. This light piece and this dark piece is thicker or wider than this. All right, so I've kind of flattened it out a little bit. If I put that almost right against. Imagine that that could be the door of the refrigerator. It is a little cartoony. It's it's a little um, more round than it would be in, in the real thing. The real thing wouldn't be super sharp. There's a little bit of roundness. Otherwise, if you ever touch this, you'd slice your hand open. But I like the cartoony style, so I'm, I'm sticking with this. Okay, now, I'm gonna hit one for front view, and I see that my door is on the other side. All right, well, I could just take both of these and I'm going to rotate Z 180 and now I hit one and that's that is the front it's just going to make things a little bit easier if I wanted to I could pull all this stuff into the middle as well roughly in the middle um, so I'm going to grab that door and then I've got origin geometry and this Origin geometry, okay, all the origins are in the middle of the objects. Okay, so one is the front. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm going to make the freezer door and the regular refrigerator door out of this one piece. <clears throat> so I'm gonna be duplicating it. So I think I'll make the freezer door first. So let's look front on, go into edit mode and wireframe because this has some thickness and I'm gonna be grabbing vertices. Control tab, make sure I'm on vertex as opposed to edge or face. I'm gonna box select these bottom ones and it looks like I've got all the refrigerator, but if I start pulling this up, there's the refrigerator in behind and this is the freezer door. So I'm gonna pull it up to where I imagine a freezer door might be. What about there? All right, could that be the freezer and below that would be the regular refrigerator door? All right, now, You'll notice again, I did this by pulling up vertices instead of, come back to object mode, 
instead of shrinking this down in the Z direction and then again messing up my bevels, I went into the object and I just pulled the vertices instead of scaling it. This way, it looks like it matches the refrigerator. The curvature is similar. Maybe you might think it's too much. It is a little bit bubbly and rounded, but I, I like that view or that look. However, my origin is down here and this is gonna be the freezer door, so I'm gonna go set origin geometry. Let's save, by the way. Okay, now we're going to do the refrigerator door part. So I'm going to Shift D to duplicate this and accept and pull the copy down to approximately where it would start. All right, maybe I could go a little bit lower than that. I don't want too much space in between. For now, I can put it there. And in front view, I'm going to edit this. I'm gonna pull it down, but I'm not just gonna scale in the Z. I'm gonna go into edit mode, wireframe, box select the bottom vertices and start pulling them down. I don't want them all the way to the bottom because I wanna put that kind of metal grating part there with little slits, either vertical or horizontal, I'm not sure, that you often see on the front of uh, refrigerators. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. And that looks about right to me. So I'm gonna deselect, go back to the solid view, and there we go. All right, so I now have my doors. Now, if I ever decided that this curvature actually was too much for the doors right here, I could select both objects, join them, and then go into edit mode and wireframe and flatten those points out like I did to the back. I would want to join them and do them all together rather than flattening the front, the, the freeze door ones and then this because I wouldn't get the same curvature in the end. You know, they'd be slightly different it would, and it would look weird, but I am not going to do that. I'm gonna leave it like that. So that's where I'm at so far. And I'm, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's take these and let's pull them a little bit closer. All right, starting to look a little bit like a cartoon fridge, okay. All right, so let's now put some feet on this. All right, very simple feet. And I'm gonna use a cylinder to do this. And I want my cylinder, when I create it, to come right in here at the bottom. And so the best way to do that is to select the region you want your new object to come in at. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. And then it will come in there. So I wanna go into the bottom. But if I just click on this, I select the whole object. So I'm gonna go into edit mode and control tab and choose face and select this face. Now that that face is selected, if I go shift S, shift S brings up this snap menu. Choose cursor to select it. That means the 3D cursor, that red and white circle that you see right here. That means I wanna bring that right to there. Well, it looks like it's down there anyhow, but I mean, here, let's, let's change this. If I just, Right click, there's my 3D cursor, all right? Let's bring in an object, Shift A, bring in a cylinder. Ah, it's, it came in there, that's miles from where I want it. Let's uh, delete that. So my cursor's there, and, and it's very common to like just right click by accident and go, oh geez, everything's all screwed up, what am I gonna do? Here's what you do, click on your object. I could just, well, let's do it this way. Select the face or the region of the object where you want this to be and go Shift S, cursor to select it, it's right there. Now watch what happens when I bring in a cylinder. Shift A to get the mesh menu. Scroll down to cylinder. I'm just gonna choose 32 and all these default settings and notice it came in right there. However, I've done something wrong. I brought the cylinder in to the this model in edit mode. It's not what I wanted, so Control Z, uh, deselect go back into object mode. My 3D cursor is still at that face. Now bring in the cylinder. I should have noticed when I when the menu looked different. All right, there. Now my cylinder is a separate object from this. Okay, and I can move it and it doesn't affect this. I'm gonna scale it globally, just like that. I'm gonna press the period key to zoom in and zoom out just a little bit. I'll scale this down. I'm gonna scale this in the Z, so SZ only will do it in the Z, and I bring my mouse in to make it smaller, out to make it bigger, maybe around there. It's still a little bit big, but maybe I like that length 
So it's like, ah, oh, I'd like to make it narrower, but, but not shorter. I can scale it, but omit the Z direction by going Scale, S, and then pressing Shift Z. Now you'll notice the green and the salmon color or brown line. The green is for the Y and the brownish is for the X. There's no blue Z line there. That means as I pull my mouse in, it's only making it smaller in the X and Y direction or out in that direction, not in the Z. So I can make it thinner. All right. Hopefully it's not too thin. In fact, I think it might be. So I'm going to scale this outwards, but not in the Z direction. Scale, Shift, Z, pull outwards, just like that. All right. Okay. Well, anyways, let's get to work on this. Uh, this thing here. What I'd like to do is I want to actually scale this. I do want to scale it in the Z a little bit like that because I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm already in face selection. I can see that I can select faces and I want to make a little stock that this cylinder or foot would rest on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inset this. And I'll zoom in more so you can see this. I'm, I'll show you what happens when I inset. Select the face, press I keep your mouse out here because it's going to uh, be functional from this from where the origin is so put your mouse out there and go I you see the dotted line push in pull out I want to push in and get this kind of effect because then I'm gonna pull this piece upwards but not just pulling it like that I'm gonna hit E to extrude and left mouse button to accept I've now created another poly there all I have to do is pull up and I want that, okay, maybe a little higher. I want a bit of a stock on this thing, which is like a foot, all right? But now I have all these sharp ends. This one, this one, this one doesn't matter because when I come into object mode, if I push this up into the body of the refrigerator, it's a little hard to see there, like that. I'm not gonna see that edge. Right? But this one I'm going to see, and well, if you're down on your knees looking under the refrigerator, but just to be, you know, complete. Now, I have scaled this. I didn't rotate it, but I've scaled it, and I'm about to bevel these edges. And you may remember before, I went Object, Apply, Scale. What is that? Control AS? Should I just learn that? Control AS? Nah, I'm not going to do it that way. <laughs> All right, so I've set this properly. I did I did uh, object apply scale, and now I can go into edit mode, and I want to bevel this edge and this edge. So I'm going to go into edge select mode. Shift Alt gets the whole edge all the way around. If I don't do Shift Alt, and I'll tell you something. Let's it's getting hard to see, right? So let's hide this stuff. Select the refrigerator and hit H. Hide it, get out of the way. In fact, the door, hide. I may still have another door visible there. I, I don't care about that one. Okay, oh, and if you're zoomed way out, select the object, press the period key, you'll zoom right in. Let's bevel these edges now. Just go back into edit mode. If I just select, I can hold down shift and I can go all the way around this. That's crazy. Just go shift alt, click the whole edge. Shift alt, get the whole edge. Just make sure you don't get something like that too. Okay, you don't want that. I just want those sort of uh, horizontal edges. Okay, find a nice vantage point and go Control B and pull gently. Don't go nuts unless you're trying to make an alien spaceship. Um, or something like that. And then put, I'm just going to, in fact, even a little bit less. I'm going to put just one segment. I just rolled my mouse up one. That will give it a little bit of roundness to it. And the more you roll, you know, the more uh, segments you put in, the more fine the, the change, but you're also making a lot of polys. So I'm just gonna put one. And from a distance, you know, you see the way it looks a little softer. Now, I know you're looking at this and going, that looks horrible, all the, all the polys there. But if you hit smooth, you know, you get rid of, of that look. But now it's got a weird shaded effect. So. Come over to your modifiers and try edge split. All right. You still get a bit of the bevel. This one we didn't bevel, but it fixes that. Now, you may not like that effect. I'm going to turn that off for the moment. It may look like you got rid of too much of the bevel. So you could try coming over here to this little triangle thing here 
and choose for the normals, auto smooth, and choose an angle. Now essentially I believe that's what edge split does. I just don't know what it's, the default angle is. I tend to not fiddle with that. I'm gonna try 45. And you see the way that has kept some of the, the a little bit more of the bevel. So if I get rid of that and come back to edge split, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's the same, maybe 45. Well, no, it says split angle 30, okay. So I'm not gonna use that, I'm gonna use edge split, and I'm just gonna go apply, and it's done. All right, so there's my, my foot, let's go. Uh, I'm, by the way, I'm not deleting, you know, a lot of people would come in here and they go, well, this isn't gonna be viewed, I'm gonna uh, delete that face, and maybe even this face. I'm not bothering with that stuff, really. Alt H, I'm gonna bring back my refrigerator, and let's find this foot. Now, let's position this foot. So I want to look at the bottom of my refrigerator to, to place these. Seven is the top, all right, see up here, it says top view. So control seven is the exact opposite. So if you're on three, okay, you're on the right side, okay? There's three. If I go control three, I'm on the left side. If you're in six and you go control six, no, I don't know if that one works. <laughs> there's the top seven, control seven is the bottom. So there's my foot. I'm gonna position this. I want four feet on this guy. And let's just double check that that, hey, let's just zoom in. Double check that that would look good and I like that. I do like that and I think that's fine. So control seven, there we go again. I'm gonna select this and instead of just copying it over, I'm gonna mirror it exactly across this refrigerator. So I've selected my foot, add modifier mirror, and I'm gonna do it in the X axis, this way along the X axis. So I've it's already selected that and I'm going to choose the object I want to mirror across, which is the refrigerator. So use the eyedropper, choose refrigerator, and it puts it in across. I also want to these two feet to be down here, right, in the Y. So I'm gonna select Y as well. I can do it all in one action and hit apply. I'll deselect and let's just look at that and make sure it looks okay. They're not the most exciting feet, but they're mine. <laughs> so I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna grab the uh, refrigerator and I'm gonna go control J uh, maybe I was off there and they're joined okay save now I have my refrigerator has feet all right cool let's put some kind of panel on the back you know on the back of your refrigerator there might be that panel with bolts and wires and stuff sticking out of it and a little sign warning do not stick your fingers in here so we're gonna do that, and the way I'm going to do that is I am going to build the back panel out of, just as I had done before for the doors, out of the refrigerator. Here's what I mean. Edit mode, make sure you're in face selection. Choose this face and say, huh, I mean, it's right there. It's right in the right position. All I have to do is make it a bit smaller and thicker and stuff. Let's use that. So I'm gonna copy this face right here, this one poly, and I'm gonna go Shift D, left mouse button to accept. So there's a copy right there. In fact, I can pull it out, I will do that. All right, there it is. The original one's right there, all right? There's the copy. But I want this as a separate object that I can manipulate. So I'm going to hit the P key, and I'm gonna separate it from the refrigerator object, and I wanna make it a new object. And it is selected, so I'm separating it by what is selected. Enter, come up, and there's my refrigerator, and this piece here is the new object, but the origin sort of still thinks it's part of the refrigerator. Just set origin to the geometry. So I can now move this independent of this, and it's a very close size. I want to look at the back. Well, one is the front, so control one, I believe, is the back. There's the, there it is right there, control one. Scale this in the X a little bit. Scale it in the Z. And bring it up a little bit. I want it, I don't want it perfectly centered. I want it sort of, uh, I mean, I do want it centered, but I want it a little bit in a slightly different position. So I want it like that. Actually, maybe a little bit longer than that. So I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit and put it right about there. Okay, so we're gonna get, gotta give this thing some, some thickness, all right? Because it's, I mean, it's just like, paper thin okay so edit mode select the face eat extrude and accept 
pull it out in this direction just a little bit. I don't need it to be too thick. Deselect, come back into object mode. Now, this is razor sharp. I want bevels similar to these. All right, they don't have to be exactly the same like I did with the doors, but I want some bevels. Um, in order to, to get good bevels, I'm, I am going to come down to Object, Apply, Scale. All right, now go into Edit Mode again, zoom way in, and in Edge Selection, um, I'm going to bevel this, and I, I want to bevel the corners so they're not sharp. Now, this, this edge right here is also sharp, but I'm going to do that next, so I always do it in this order. Grab that edge and that edge. I'm holding down the shift to add. There, I've got all four of those edges. We can zoom in and look at that one because they're all gonna behave the same way. Control B and pull back and see the way it's starting to round those off? All right, or at least chop them there. Now, I'm gonna put in one, two. That's probably enough curvature for a simple model. So I'm gonna leave it at that and left click. Okay, so I'm going to get them rounded like that. That might even be too round for an electrical panel. In fact, I think it, maybe it is. Uh, so let's deselect. Let's do it again. I've got them selected. Control B. Let's pull back. Let's just put one in. Okay, ever so slightly rounded. But I also want to round this edge a little bit. Not the back edge because I'm going to push that into the refrigerator. So just get a viewpoint that you like. And by the way, I just shift alt click that to get the whole thing. Once again, don't just get that piece and then go around and do them all. You can just go shift alt and, and, and make sure you get a continuous line all the way around. Zoom in, control B, pull back just a little bit like that. Put one segment, roll your mouse up one, deselect and you're done. That's it for the beveling. I can push that in a little bit like that. And that's where that panel would go. Now, of course, we're not done with the panel, but save, save, save. Okay, so I want to cut some holes in, in this. I want to do a Boolean. I want to cut holes in it. Um, I don't, my 3D cursor is right down here. I'm going to bring in a cylinder, uh, a, sorry, a cube, shift A, cube. But if I do that, it comes in down there. That's not what I want. I want it to come in close to this. So I've got this whole object selected. Might as well go. Shift S, cursor to select it. There's my 3D cursor there, that red and white dashed circle. So Shift A, cube, and there. It's really nice. All I gotta do now is scale it in the X, SX, to about the width I want, scale it in the Z, to about the height I want, bring it up into position, and let's look at the side. I just need this to cut through. I don't need it that long, so I'm gonna scale it in the Y. Make it maybe that long. There, you see the way it pushes through. So it is, I'm going to use this to make to make a hole. But if I do this right now, the hole is going to be surgically square, very sharp corners. I want a little bit of curvature, just like I did here in my holes. And you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to bevel my cutting object so that the hole is slightly curved. But because I changed the scale of this, I'm going to go, uh, not add, object, apply, scale. Now, notice the color change that flipped, right? When that happens, before you do anything else, go into edit mode, select your object, A, and go, well, I'll show you where the mesh, normals, recalculate outside, or control N. See the way it changed back? Now all the polys are facing outwards. Some of the polys when I did that scale thing uh, flipped. So you gotta make sure that they're, they're like that. Edge selection. Now, I want the hole to be curved. In other words, the curves have to be along these edges, right? Because these edges are gonna be the ones that cut. Not this edge. This edge isn't gonna touch this. You know, and not this edge, it's not gonna touch that. Watch what I mean. I've selected those edges. Control B, pull back, not too much. One segment like that. Now, let me deselect and then come out and have a look at this. Okay, see the way it's ever so slightly curved? The hole is gonna have some curvature. So let's actually go ahead and, and do this. 
but I want a whole bunch of these down. I don't want just one, and I could copy them, but instead I'm going to use an array. Array, and I want them in the z direction, not in the x direction. You see, I've got the relative offset of one. I don't want them going off, you know, in the x direction. I want them going in the z direction and down, so they're going to be negative. So I just pull it, that's positive, that's negative. You could, of course, just type in you know, uh, minus 2.2 or whatever. Why didn't that work? Minus 2.2. All right. But notice it's off to the side, like stairs. That's because I've still got X in here. So zero that out. All right. But I don't need it that. I don't need them that. Like something like that. Okay. But I want more of them. So I'm going to change the count. I want four of them. That's looking cool. All right, so I'm going to hit apply. That's my array. You can also set origin or go into the middle of those, but I want another set of those. So I'm going to go shift D to copy and just arbitrarily pull them down to maybe there. So I want holes here and here. I'm actually going to select both of them and go control J and join them. And if you want to put origin and geometry right in the middle, that way I only have to do one Boolean operation uh, using this whole thing as my cutting tool. So to cut things, to cut holes like this, make sure they go all the way through, select the object you want to cut, which is this panel. Add modifier, Boolean, the operation is difference. And then the object that I want to cut with is these things. So choose the eyedropper, hit that, press apply. Now you don't see anything, grab your objects and hit H to hide. And you can see holes were placed in, in there. Alt H brings it back, but it'll bring back anything else you, you hit. So if you hide, uh, you know, both of these H, if I go Alt H, it brings back everything, but I don't care about that. Just select those objects. I don't need them anymore. X and delete. I now have my holes. Now, um, sometimes what I will do is I will bevel the actual holes. You may notice they are quite sharp, all right? And at times, you can bevel by selecting the edges. If you can get all of the edges around, I'm holding Shift and Alt, making sure, or trying to make sure I get all of this and nothing else. Just gonna do um, the ones on the front because the back side of the panel is not gonna be seen. It's against the refrigerator. I've tried to go all the way around this. What did I get? Did I do something else weird? No, I'm just seeing the blue in the back. All right, I'm gonna to try to bevel these. I don't need to look at all of them. I can zoom in just on those. Control B and pull back gently. One segment, release, deselect, and it did work. And it gives just a small amount of beveling to catch some light and it looks a little bit more natural. Okay, so I'm going to take this now, put it against the back of the refrigerator, push it in a little bit so it doesn't stick out too much, and Control S. Uh, that's that's fine. I should say that. Let me go into this and see. Nah, because of that line there would be a little bit tough to lengthen this the way I was going I was thinking of doing it but I'm not going to do that anyhow let's join these two together control J to join them we need some bolts up here though all right um, my 3d cursor is out there let's just well let's do this all right I want to bring in a bolt and I want to start it in the in the corners what you can do is choose some piece that is relatively centered like I just edge selected that's so shift s cursor is selected brings my 3d cursor there and deselect and come back into object mode and now anything i bring in will come in at that position i'm going to bring in a circle mesh circle i need to rotate this rotate in the x by 90 degrees and scale okay so notice it's at the 3d cursor i'm going to move this around and I want relatively big bolts. It, that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm going for. Press the period key to zoom way in. Okay, maybe not quite that big. I'm gonna create a bolt right there that would hold this panel onto the refrigerator. 
The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go into edit mode. Okay, make sure I've selected that ring and hit F and that'll put a face in the middle of it. I'm going to hit E to extrude and accept and I'm going to come out in this direction. Now, one thing I want you to see, I don't want to come out that far, but I want you to see, see this dark brown stuff and this light brown? I can tell that my polys are flipped. Now, now watch this. Let me, let me do something. Let me bring this outwards a bit. All right. Let me, let me do it this way. Let's grab this, this face. I want, I, want, I want you to see, if I push this in and come out the other way, notice they're all nice and, and, and the same color and looks, looks right. That's because I extruded in this direction instead of this direction. If that happens, and, and periodically, you may not even know. Like, for example, if I go this way, if I go to flip my polys, as I'm about to show you, it's not going to ruin anything. It's just going to say that the computer will say, well, you're already OK. But if I go like this and they're wrong, just select the whole thing, Control N. OK, and I get the same effect. Now, I want to scale this in the Y because I don't want it that big. Uh, I'll start with that. OK, I'm going to make a screw out of this. And the way I tend to do it is go into edit mode. Oh, by the way, I changed the scale on this. So I'm going to go object, apply scale. Go into edit mode. And you can either select the face, which gets this edge, or you can just select the edge itself, which will get this face, six of one, half a dozen of the other. And I'm going to bevel. Control B, pull back. One, two, two is fine. I'm just going to do it like that. And come on out. OK, and you can see the beginnings. I'm not done of a bolt. It's rather large. All right, that's OK. And it's also rather thick, but let's leave it like that for the moment. Let's go Shift S cursor to select it. Bring the 3D cursor right to the bolt because I'm going to cut in the little uh, groove so you can put the screwdriver in. All right, so I'm going to bring in a cube. Shift A, cube. It looks huge, so press S and just bring your mouse towards the middle and you'll start to see the cube. There we go. Oh, we lost it. It's too small. It's in, or it's in behind. Do that. Bring it out a bit. And I want to scale it in the Z. Scale in the Z. Maybe like that. I'm going to scale it in the X. I want it to cut through, but that's certainly not that deep. I'm just going to pull it out now. I'm going to cut in that much. Maybe not quite that much. All right, so the screwdriver could go in there. So I'm going to use this as, a, as the cutting tool to cut into this. So I changed the scale of this, so it's always a good idea to go Object, Apply, watch the color. OK, it didn't change. Fair enough. Save before you do a Boolean. Select my object. Go Boolean, Difference. And then under Object, select that. And you see this white line that just appeared? That means it worked. I can actually delete that. It's often a good idea to hide, see if your Booleans work. But I know it worked, so I'm going to delete it. And there's my cut right there. Now, if I don't like this appearance and I want to smooth this, watch what happens. It gets all weird, OK, because of the angle. So you can come in here and fiddle with the angles. Try 45, and ah, it's nice and smooth, and that's it. That's, that's fine, you know. OK, now, another thing you can do to make it look a little bit more realistic is in the you can rotate this in the Z direction. The Z is coming straight out at you. So if I go rotate, sorry, I meant Y. Rotate Y, I can do this. OK, if I go rotate Z, you know, it goes off weird. That's not. I want rotate Y. Just if you don't want your screw, you know, to look perfectly, you know, symmetrical or whatever, especially if you're going to copy these. Uh, you know, if I'm going to copy this over there and I don't want them on the, the, the uh, indentation all in the same orientation. But you know what? It's so small and no one's getting in behind my refrigerator to look at the bolts. And I actually just want to mirror these to make it simple. And so I'm going to try that. I select my screw. I come over to the modifiers. And go to mirror in the X direction of this. Worked. Can I also do it in the Z direction? No, it puts them at the very bottom of, of that. So I'm not going to do that. Whoops, I do want it in the X. I will apply that and accept. It. And for this, I will Shift D and pull them down to where I want them. Sometimes you have to do that. All right. And again.
again they don't have to be in the exact position because I mean what person who is working on this built it exact unless it was a machine or something now you're gonna notice that's that they're all in the same orientation or actually a mirrored orientation that's fine and select that select that and select the back and control J now I don't know if you noticed a little color change that's because of smoothing let's let's get the smoothing oh let's do that that should solve that okay good cool so I've done my back panel with the bolts the feet starting on the doors great how is my time going 45 minutes to do that all right um let's make the handles on these just have to commit to the size and to tell you the truth I feel like that's gonna be a big freezer I don't know maybe we won't, won't, won't waste time okay so I'm going to make some handles for this um, I want to build a handle right on this freezer door so I might as well bring my 3d cursor right to that shift s cursor to select it all right it happens to be right in the middle but that's fine I'm going to use a cube shift a cube and one is the front scale in the X make it up the approximate width of a handle for a freezer scale it in the Z and as I do that it looks too wide in the X all right let's scale also in the Y oh it's disappearing scale it in the Y more I want it thinner let's see if that looks kind of right let's move it over to the side a bit imagine a handle something like that it's still a bit too wide I'm gonna do something with this in a moment maybe we'll start with that okay so I would have a handle on the freezer and one on the fridge and be ever so slightly different okay so I'm going to go into edit mode and I want to go into edge selection and choose this edge and this edge and I want to bring them in uh, to sort of taper it a bit now you can use a taper modifier but I'm just going to do it this way I'm going to scale those edges inward so I select them and I go scale in the X pull it like this and see the way it tapers it like that I'll come out so I'm gonna get that sort of effect okay well that's not all I'm going to do the next thing I'm going to do is I want this handle to have little sort of legs on the top and the bottom that would connect to the door but if I start trying to turn this I gotta hide this and all that it's complicated to sort of do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do it on this side I'll show, I'll show you what I mean first of all control R adds an edge loop I'm gonna left click to accept and pull to about that position I'm gonna do the same down the bottom similar height like that it doesn't have to be exact so that this distance is similar to this distance now that has created if I go into face selection more polys all around there and there and on the back as well I could try to reach in the back grab this poly and maybe I can grab this poly and then I can extrude them in to the door you know or I could hide stuff but you know what I can just grab it here and here pull them out this way and then rotate the whole handle so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to select that poly and that poly I'm going to hit E to extrude and in the Y direction I'm going to pull out about that far deselect back into object mode I've built my handle rotate Z 180 done how about that okay instead of fiddling around push it into the refrigerator there have a look at it is it in there I guess it is save select it and I've now scaled and rotated it so I'll choose scale and rotation now that I've done that I should be able to add a bevel modifier to this now the default looks like that's so all 
unless you're going for that effect. I'm going to increase the number of segments. I often go with two, and I'm going to decrease the width, and it's going to pull out my left. I'm holding left mouse button. There's like zero. I'm just up a little bit until I get an effect that I like, a bevel that I like. There you go. I didn't have to bevel that one by hand. And that's the general effect that I'm going for. Okay, I'm not going to apply it yet. I'm going to take this and build the other handle. All right, Shift D to duplicate, pull it down. But I want to rotate this so it's upside down from how it currently looks. I'm going to rotate this around the Y axis. All right, that's the one sticking in, so I'm just going like, to spin it around. So I'm going to go rotate Y 180, and there it is. I also want this handle roughly the same distance from here to the end of the door, so that's fine. But I want this one to be longer. I don't want them the exact same length. I want this one longer. I could just shorten this one, but I'm going to lengthen this one. Now, if I just scale, it's going to change the proportions of everything. That's not what I want to do. So I'm going to do the technique I showed you before. Edit mode, wireframe. No, I'll use, uh, I like vertex. And I want to box all of this. And then I'm going to pull it down. Don't go too crazy. Something like that. Let's get the solid mode. There, like that my handles are still the same length as they were before by doing it that way so far so good all right now on this i'm going to apply the bevel and on this i'm going to apply the bevel but there's one more thing i want to do i want to put a little design element on this and i'm going to bring in a cube but I, my 3d cursor is right up here so i'm going to select my handle shift s cursor to select it deselect and now bring in my cube, and it's going to be huge, but it's right at the position of the handle, right there. I'm going to make it smaller, period key to zoom in. Not that much, though. I'm going to pull this up to here and scale it in the X, scale it in the Z, bring it up a bit more. Let's look straight on. All right, let's scale in the X a bit more and scale it in the Z even a little bit more. Now let's look at the, the, the depth. I want to push this in about that much. I don't need any more than that. Do I want to round the corners? I often would. This is so small, I'm not going to bother. But I am going to go Object, Apply, Scale. I'm going to do a Boolean on this. All right. So I'm selecting it. Boolean, Difference. Select my cube. It doesn't look like anything happened. Hit Apply. Hide this, don't delete it. There's my indentation. But it looks very stark. So cut and dry, so sharp, that's terrible. Let's see if we can bevel this. So go into the handle in edit mode. Make sure you deselect everything. Edge mode, now there's a lot of stuff going on. Let's see if we can do this. Try Shift Alt, click, and see what you get. Now you notice I get these lines. I don't wanna bevel this line, I only wanna bevel this now I'm gonna start shift and clicking my way around and once in a while I'm gonna shift alt click now I've got the the yellow rectangle but I've also got or is that green this shift and click and get rid of those selections and make sure nothing else is selected all right I'm gonna try a bevel control B pull back just a little bit roll one segment and get out get in and get out and I put a little bevel I may have gotten away with two and it'll make it look even better and if I rounded those edges it probably would have looked even better but you know what hey we're gonna see it from from there so it's not worth it's not worth it alt H to bring back that square select it and let's bring it up for use up here it's not gonna be need in the exact same position it no one's gonna be measuring this fridge put it around there Okay, it's in the same depth, all right, because I didn't change the depth. So like this, Boolean, difference, oops, cube, apply. I know it worked now and I don't need that anymore, so delete it. 
edit mode, same deal. Okay, get in there in edge selection, shift alt click, and just go around and just deselect and reselect until you've got just the outer border. I ah, see, see this stuff? That's a good thing to show you. You don't want this. Shift and click that and get rid of that. And you don't want this. We just want the outer edge to bevel. Let's try it. Control B, pull back, one segment. Right around there. Okay, see, see how it catches light? It looks better. Always do that if you can. All right. That's my handles. Let me just double check that they're okay. They're okay. I'm joining it to the to that door. I'm joining that one to that door. There's my refrigerator so far. Good. Taking a break. We'll be right back. Let's keep working on the exterior of the refrigerator, and then we'll do the inside. Um, let's let's come down to the bottom here. And I want to do that uh, grating, you know, like a, I don't know what that is, air intake or out, outtake, <laughs> whatever. So I want to bring in a rectangle here and I want to do some work on it. And so um, my 3D cursor is up on the handle right now. So I'm going to select the refrigerator, go to edit mode. And if, if I just, in face selection, select that face, the origin is there, so I, I don't want to bring my rectangle in there. And so instead of selecting that that face, I'm going to come into edge selection. I'm going to select that edge. So when I bring in my my cube, it's going to come in a lot closer to where I want it down in the bottom. So I'm going to go sh Shift S, cursor to select it. There's my 3D cursor. Deselect and go back into object mode. All right, Shift A, Add Mesh Cube. There it is, right at the bottom front view, scale it in the X, how did that happen, scale it in the X, I don't need it quite as wide as the door, scale it in the Z, get it down to the approximate size, and then manipulate it, uh, scale it in the Z a little bit more, let's have a look now, <laughs> I don't need it that, stick it out like that, scale it in the Y, and let's uh, see how, think it is now I, I can sort of push it in there and then in face select mode select that face and then bring it in you go to, to control three I'll bring it into about there some of them are, are more like that eh, maybe I'll try that this time I don't need it sticking out too much okay so I'm going to do some work on that uh, but in order to do some work, I've scaled it. So I'm going to go back into object mode and go object, apply scale. And I think for this, I'll, let's try the bevel modifier, bevel, two segments, and just adjust the width, pull it down until it's something like that. Okay. Now, the problem is the bevel is sticking out and so it doesn't look like it's inserted that much. So I'm just gonna scale it in the Y a bit, like that. Now my origin is way out here. I could set origin to geometry. What if I did it there? What would that look like? That would probably be okay. Now, when you do a Boolean on something with the bevel modifier, you sometimes get some weird results. I'll, I'll try it and we'll see how it looks. Otherwise, what I would probably do is apply that bevel and then do my booleans. So, um, yeah, I'm going to bring in another cube to cut into this. So I'm going to select this Shift S cursor to select it. Put my 3D cursor right there, so I can bring in another cube to do some cutting, and it will be where I need it. I don't want it the whole width, so I'll go like that. Scale it to Z, nice and thin. And I think I'm going to do, uh, I think I'm going to do them uh, horizontally. 
and get the scale in the Y. Let's just make sure it goes in like about that deep. Doesn't have to cut the whole thing. Just an indentation is good enough. Um, but I want rounded edges on this as well. So I've scaled it, so call apply scale. Now notice, see the color change? Okay, we gotta fix that. So go to edit mode, it's already selected, but make sure it's selected, control and flip the polys. Okay, in edge selection, I wanna select all of these edges along the sides and let's bevel them to make a rounded edge. Control B, pull back, one segment's good enough. Okay, so now when I cut in, it'll be slightly rounded. I still may have to bevel those edges, but I wanna see how it works with this bevel modifier. So let's uh, use the array in the Z direction, not the X direction. And it's gonna be the negative Z down like that. I'd be happy with three of them. That's good enough. Well, maybe I can get a fourth one. Let's pull them up a little bit and kind of sort of center them. Look straight on and do that. Okay, we could try that. Let's apply that. And we can set origin to geometry if you want, right in the middle. Let's save first. Let's try this. Let's have a look at this bevel and see how it works. Select the object I want to uh, add the Boolean to. Go add Boolean. Now you'll notice it comes in down here below the bevel. You can try bringing it above. Here it is now. Difference. And the object is this. Watch the bevel. See the way it, it, it got rid of a lot of that bevel. If you don't mind that effect, you can go ahead. But I don't want that. Let's try it below the bevel, after the bevel. But we haven't applied it yet. Operation, difference. Select. It looks like it's kept the bevel. But sometimes when you hit apply, it will change. So let's try this. See the way it got rid of that? It says applied modifier was not first. Result may not be as expected. Yeah, exactly. I don't like it. So... Uh, we're going to apply the bevel here and now we'll do the boolean apply hide and I get this now these edges are quite sharp and I may or may not be able to bevel these by hand which is what I would tend to do control E edge selection shift alt click shift alt click until you get all of it but you see the problem is there are little pieces that are not being selected all the time so let's just keep trying see if you can get it all shift and select i believe i've got it all i may not get a good smooth bevel but i, I think i i might be all right control b pull back just a little bit mm -hmm. let me let me show you something see all this junk over here it's not gonna be a nice smooth bevel and so in that case for me anyhow at this point I'm gonna leave it like that it's not gonna be that that visible we're gonna go alt H and we're gonna bring those back and delete them I don't need those but there's going to be that thing and I can now decide if I like the positioning of that right there if that's okay with me and I think it is I'm going to join this to the body of the refrigerator and save and then I am just going to decide if I want a cylinder in here to represent some kind of a attachment and normally this door would be supported at the bottom and supported there attached and this one will be attached at the top I'm not going to do that I think I am going to bring in a cylinder right in here though not that you would ever see it but just so and I'm not going to do anything else other than that I want to bring in a cylinder and I want it close to that region so I'm going to select that edge shift s cursor to select it and come back out I'm going to bring in a cylinder and it's going to be huge I'm going to scale it down and uh bring it in down I'm going to hit the period key to zoom in that's not the position I want it in but something like that let's look at the side view now 
let's see it might be fine like that I don't mind it being relatively big so you might even see it I don't even think I really need to smooth it but maybe I will anyhow let's just do edge split all right I yeah, let's apply that I could actually even attach this to the refrigerator because I won't be moving that anymore even when I swing the door open. We'll see if, if that gives me a problem when I open the door or not. All right, good, so far so good. Okay, let's start working on the inside of the refrigerator. Let's take this door and hide it, and take this door and hide it, and I see we don't have any openings yet. All right, well, we're going to carve some openings into this. So. Let's select this and let's just go Shift S cursor selected, the, the refrigerator in general. Eh, you know what? We could actually do better than that. We can select this front face, Shift S cursor selected, and then we'll get our cutting tool closer to where we need it. All right, let's do it. Hoping that won't be in, that shouldn't be in, in the way. You know what? That may be in the way. Let's find out. I'm going to bring in a cube. All right, front view, scale it in the X, scale it globally, and it might be in the way. We're gonna make the freezer, scale it in the Z. Now, how big should it be? Well, what we're gonna do is come, we're in, okay, Alt-H, bring back the doors, and we can see the cube right there. All right, so we can get a sense of, of where it should be where the, the cut should be so let's uh, uh, let's do it this way grab this face pull it up and say okay that's gonna be about the size of my freezer right and we can do the same thing shift D for the fridge itself come down to there select that bottom face Say I want it to there, all that kind of thing. That looks fine. Now, how far is that in? Let's go into wireframe and say, oh, okay, well, that's not deep enough. We need it, you know, right back to there, but then maybe we have to bring those front faces out a little bit. So let's do that. Grab that. In fact, yeah, we can do that. It doesn't even matter how far, you know, if they're separate objects, and if they cut, if we pull them out, you know, like if this one goes out to there, it doesn't matter. All right, it's okay. So let's get on the wireframe. All right. Um, what we are going to do though is we are going to bevel these edges. Now. I'm starting to think that the best way to do this is to actually join these. All right, we can origin to geometry. And let's apply scale and bevel them all together as one object and then we'll get the same amount of bevel. So let's choose these side edges on both rectangles. All right, so that when we bevel, control B and pull back, we'll get the same amount of bevel. I'm gonna do two for this. Deselect, come out. This is my cutting tool, and I'm gonna cut into the refrigerator. All right, now, I'm not cutting into the doors, so I'm gonna hide the doors. So there they are, you can double check again in wireframe and see. Okay, it goes in pretty far, not right to the back. You can, adjust this pull it in a little bit further if you want one thing I wanted to note was whether or not this thing is impacted in any way let's look at the front view but it doesn't look like it is let's go back out here yeah nothing's touching that so I don't care about that all right we're gonna do a big boolean now notice I've rounded the edges on the refrigerator so choose the refrigerator choose boolean difference and then my object just choose that hit apply and hide and we've cut pretty deeply into that refrigerator that's why I have another look in wireframe okay you can see how far we cut in 
that looks, that looks fine. Uh, object mode, Alt H brings back everything. Let's just delete those and let's hide the doors again. Okay, now we have a nice rounded hole here, but it's very sharp. So we need to bevel these edges by hand. Go into edit mode, edge selection and shift alt, click your way around. You should take you just maybe two clicks to get everything, if everything has worked out well. So there, I've got that selected. Let's zoom in and have a look. Control B, pull back, not too much. I'm gonna put two segments nice and tight and now you'll notice a nice rounded edge there I could even do make it a bit wider but that's that's fine for this let's bring back the doors and select them and move them out a bit and just sort of imagine they were closing that space I think that would I hope that would look alright so all right, let's hide those. Save. It's now time to work on the interior of the refrigerator. Let's make a couple of trays in here. Uh, I'm going to do this using a plane, and I want the plane to come in. Well, even right there would be fine. So I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh Plane. All right, front view. I can scale in the X so it's just a little bit narrower hold shift down so you don't move too quickly just a little narrower than the opening there all right and I'm gonna scale it in the Y and see what it would look like if I pushed it back most almost to the end you know I pushed it right back there's the end it's back a little bit you know because they don't come right out to the front that's even a little bit too short I think too far in but I'm gonna go into edit mode and select this edge and pull it out just a little bit say so, okay imagine it went out that far so I can close the door and have some um, shelves on the door and my stuff will collide so if I like that I'm gonna come back to object mode and I'm gonna bring this out so I can work on this I'll try origin to geometry make sure that everything's cool I'm gonna hit period key to zoom in on that now I want to do some work on this, um, obviously, this little shelf that's going to go in here. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to hit control R to bring make an edge loop. And I'm going to left click to accept. I'm going to pull it to maybe around this position. What I'm eventually going to be doing is grabbing that edge, that area, and pulling it down to make a little lip and giving this some thickness, but I'm not going to do that yet. Instead, I'm going to eight select it all it's just a plane so it gets the face and I'm gonna go E to extrude and pull up in the Z to give it a bit of thickness so I want it you know that thick let's say imagine it's a piece of plastic all right so now I want to bend the lip at the front down but I'm not just gonna grab the edge instead I'm gonna grab this front poly so I've gone into face selection and I'm gonna pull this down a little bit just to, to taste whatever you like all right, now it looks a little bit sharp right now, but we're gonna bevel this in a while. All right, so let's have a look at that, okay? Okay, so let's uh, save that so far. Let's come back into it in edit mode, and I'm going to go Control R, and I will put, I think, two edge loops like that. So I'm rolling my mouse up. There's one, two, three, and it's one, two. Left click to accept right click to finish it but before I deselect and those go all the way around by the way and if I did deselect backs and it's no problem I can just shift alt click and select them both I'm gonna scale in the X and pull in to about there to about that position no you know what I want a bit more scale X I want out I want more space um I am then going to select that face, shift select that face, this face and this face, I think. And I'm gonna go I to inset and pull them in. And when you do that, you often inset more in one axis than in the other. There's, it pulled it in more in the X than in the Y. So I'm gonna 
scale in the Y and pull it down a bit. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Just something like that, that's fine. And it did it on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to try quickly Control E bridge edge loops, and I don't think it's going to work. No, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to go X and delete those faces. Now I have to rebuild this, and I'm going to do it in vertex selection mode. I want to select that vertex and that one, and this one and this one, and press F to make a face. And I'm going to build these walls again. Okay, this one and this one. You got to have four this one and this one and just be careful which vertices you you select all right let's get uh, this top one and that bottom one this top one and the bottom one F takes a little while to do it and let's get this one and this one and then this one and this one so there's that side and I could cut it and mirror it but it doesn't take that long so I might as well just do them all that one and that one and this one and this one and this one and this one oh, it gets a little weird sometimes make sure you're getting the right vertices I've often done the wrong one and I may still do the wrong one let's hope not though that one and that one and then that one and that one ah, they get an optical illusion sometimes there Okay, come out and look at it and see if you got it all. Cool. So I made this like little thing, wing-like thing with some holes. Uh, let's go selected, object, apply, scale, and let's try adding the bevel modifier. Two segments, but just go crazy. Don't go crazy. Just reduce this. Just like that. Okay, that's good enough. Let's apply that bevel. And now I want to make some lines in here to fill up this space a little bit, sort of like a grating you'll see. Uh, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to shift S, cursor to select it. So I can bring in an object right here and it's gonna be another cube. Uh, I'm gonna scale this in the X until I start to see the edge. That's fine. Yes. Scale this in the Y is going to be real. I want it really thin. And scale in the Z. I want that really thin as well. And let's uh, let's zoom in a bit more. And I want it's going to have to be more. Scale it in the Z. Because I'm going to bring it up a little bit. And scale it in the Y. I'm going to bring this back here and just look at the positioning. Now, you, no one's going to see it up close. All right. That goes there and it goes all the way across. Okay. We're going to bevel this. Object, apply, scale. And we're going to bevel just the top edges. This, this edge. All right. I'm in the wrong. That one and that one. Just the top edges. Control B pull back just a little bit like that roll the mouse up one just maybe there and it looks just a little more rounded it's a little bit more nicer I think I want this up a bit but I don't want it coming through this that's good enough and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add an array but it's in the Y not in the X and it's going to be in the negative y so it's going to come down here so let's try there and then just scroll down let's go no let's not go one more let's, let's just position this a little bit better try that see if you like it so imagine like all your food things go on top of that <laughs> that's good enough i'm going to apply that array and let's see if the bevel modifier it has been applied. So I'm going to join those. It's a lot of polys right there, but it's a neat piece. All right. Let's slide this back in. Okay. I can go um, GY, go Y, grab Y, whatever. Pull it in. Let's change my vanish point. So 
I don't want it right to the back. You know, somewhere, somewhere around there, and check the clearance at the front. So imagine that's in there, and then you could just, you know, Shift B and duplicate it a couple of times, and uh, just, just imagine the different various shelves in your refrigerator. Now, of course, there are got to be something to hold those unless they're bolted in. Um, so I could do that too. Let's uh, let's choose this object. Shift S cursor selected. Bring in a cube again. It's going to be quite big, so let's scale this down like that. Uh, we'll scale in the X really thin. Pretty thin. Scale in the Z. Okay, it's going to disappear. So bring it under and zoom in. Set again. The Y direction is the back ones. So scale in Y. Let's say that was okay. Let's save. Let's do object apply scale. And let's try just the default beveler here. Two segments, not even really worth it. Down the bellow to something like that. Okay. Let's say it was there. Good enough. All right, let's say we like that. Let's apply that bevel and let's mirror that to the other side with respect to this piece here. No, let's do it with respect to the fridge. Okay. Mirror in the X with respect to the refrigerator. And there it is. All right, let's just apply that. We can go uh, object origin geometry. And then we could just copy this down with that. Or we could just delete both of those and then, you know, grab this and this. And then we could go shifty and it'll preserve the relationship between all the pieces. Okay, so let's do that. Let's um, let's do one more down below. Set ourselves up for making the fruits and vegetable uh, tray. We can have different heights. Let's also shift D and bring one of these up into the freezer, right about there. I don't know if all your foods is going to topple off. Maybe that lip should be facing upwards, but I like it like this. Uh, while we're up here in the freezer, let's um, let's go into edit mode and select this back face so we can go Shift S cursor to select it and come out, and then let's bring in another cube. A lot of cubes. Let's sort of build a box inside here. That we would use in this position this first to sort of store some I don't know what you'd store um, bread maybe whatever you wanted really not back but you know geez gotta hide hide those doors again and uh, let's see let's uh, scale in the Y let's pull it back a bit something like that let's Push it up to there, and I'll select this interface, and I'll hit uh, I to inset, and just push it in. I hit I to inset so that I can get a little bit of a wall around here. If I don't do that, and if I just select this and I go E to inset, you know, there's there's nothing there, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit I, and then I'm bringing in, and I get. Those walls now when I go E to inset and I pull this in and you look in wireframe so you can see how far to go. You know, something like that. Um, now I've got a bit of a wall and it looks like a sort of a box. Okay, and uh, let's pretend the box is just bolted in on the side there. Alright, let's object apply scale and let's do the bevel modifier on there. Like that, I do 
actually kind of want it, like it when it's up near the top. Let's see how that would work. Uh, that curvature messes it up, so. That's good enough. Maybe fit forward. Just while we were at it. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, oh, let's uh, supply that. That's fine. Well, that's really all I'm going to do with the freezer, anyhow. We are moving along. Okay, how to do this bottom part here. Let's select that tray there. Cursor to select it. Let's bring in a cube, scale it in the Z, put it down. this is just two separate drawers side by side in which case I can do this and just as a test to see how how big this is I can I can do that and uh, hold the geometry first mm. yeah that maybe not what I wanted to do but that's fine so I can do this so come on right out to around the center point that's fine let's uh, control and let's get rid of that and let's do this one instead of orange and geometry again let's uh, I need to look at how long it was yeah it's coming up the back of the refrigerator uh, that's not a good idea Let's grab that face and from, what is it, control three? No, it doesn't matter what side. Let's bring this back kind of, maybe not quite as long as this as this tray. And, and, and that front obviously won't be, that's gonna be under this lip, I think, for the moment. Anyhow, we can adjust all this. All right, let's take this out. And make sure we got origin geometry. All right, let's have a look at this. Um, so what do we want to do here? I think what I want to do is delete this face. And I think that's all I want to do. Let's try this. Come back and try the solidify and then we'll see how it looks if I up the thickness. Yeah, I never like that. Yeah, I see a difference in thickness there. And even even thickness just doesn't do it. So let's do this. Let's go into edit mode. Uh, what if I eat extrude? Scale in the X, bring it out a certain distance. Oh, this is going to do that, eh? Yeah. No, that's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to do at all. That's the extrude scale in the X. Still get that, eh? I mean, it really doesn't matter. I could easily build this. You know, I could do that, and I could, uh, I could take this back face, e extrude, and then the Y. No, I wouldn't. I get this. Huh? Okay, this is not what I want to do anyhow. Sorry about that. Yeah, we are going to use the solidify. Okay, and I'm just going to boost this up a bit. 
that's fine. Um, I'm going to apply that and then let's bevel uh, those edges. Object apply scale first though. Edge selection, want this one, this one, this one, and this one. Did I do something weird? What did I do? Well, let's try it. Maybe it's the solidify. This one is good enough. That should be fine. Outer edge and inner edge. Now let's just do outer edge. Control B. Just be careful they don't overlap. Let's do that. I think that's enough roundness for me. Let's try pushing this back under. Okay. I guess the lid is this <laughs> for the time being. All right. Uh, origin geometry. Yeah. And um, let's. Uh, Select this front face. Shift S cursor to selected. Come back out and bring in a cube and scale it down. Scale it to Z. And I just want to use this to touch in, but I'm not I'm not gonna round the edges for this. It's so so small. So let's try a Boolean on this. Boolean difference for this. Apply, hide, let me get that little effect. I don't know if it's worth trying to bevel this even. It might be, and it may or may not work. It's not very deep. Let me try it. Just one. You know, catches a bit more light, it's a bit more visible. Alt H to, to oh, geez. bring that back and everything else back. And scale and the X, this thing. Scale and the Z. And um, we'll scale it in the Y as well. I was just thinking of putting that on there. Maybe scale the Y a bit more. And beveling it. Let's zoom in so you can see stuff. If I have that, um, if I just duplicate it, that's pretty good for the the tightness of things. So I could put that one there and leave this one a little bit out. So it looks, you know, not perfectly symmetrical. So that's what I got so far. I think maybe I will though move this down a bit. In fact, I'm going to move this one down a bit too because I'm now going to create the little computer that controls the refrigerator a little bit. So um, I'll go ahead and I'll bring the cursor to there and then bring in a cube. Scale it to the Z. Want it, you know, not too too thick. Scale it in the X. So it kind of just fits there. And we'll scale this in the Y as well. Think of it like a VCR inside your refrigerator. You know, like fitting sort of back there. And that maybe bolt it into the roof a little bit like that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's work on this thing. Let's go. Origin of geometry. Okay, obvious. Let's save it. Uh, let's go object apply scale. And um, I'm going to try this the normal beveler. Two segments. Decrease the width. Something like this. Okay. And um, 
Let's uh, let apply that. Well, we'll see. Shift S cursor selected. Uh, Shift A. We'll bring one more cube. Scale. It's a small thing here. Up there. Scale in the Z. Punch in with this down here. Let's look at the front. All right. That's going to be fine. Let's apply the scale. And I want this to have rounded edges. So I'm going to grab that one, this one, this one, and this one. Control B, pull back. Put, I don't know, a couple segments, one segment, two segments, really doesn't matter. Save it. And let's do a Boolean on this. Let's try with the bevel there. We'll see what happens here. Difference that apply. Yeah. Okay, I don't like that. So let's just apply the bevel and then this apply. Uh, I'm gonna just move it over here because I only want to use that. You know what? That's that's a little bit too far in. I don't need it that far in. indentation that's better okay now difference select apply that's that's somewhat better still pretty deep but good enough let's bevel that edge if I can okay control B pull back one I'll put two just to be different See, much better than a, just a sharp edge. Let's take this and globally scale it a bit, and then um, I want to make a little button out of this, but I want to preserve the curvature. So, wireframe and in vertex selection, I'm going to box select that, bring it in so it looks kind of like a it's like a square, a bit more square than it than it was. Uh, I'm going to scale it in the Y without affecting the curvature though. Except, let's go origin geometry, let's bring it in, push it against there. I want to bevel the top here. Edge, select that edge, control B, pull back a little bit. Hmm, I want to have a look at something here. I think I need to with, no. <laughs> adjust scale. Object, apply, scale before I bevel. But yeah, I did. One, just one. And let's look that. No, actually, I can make that even smaller globally. Okay. Add modifier array in the X direction. Two, three, four. Apply. Join. Good. So far, so good. We're getting there. Let's grab that edge. No, let's not. Let's grab this button. Shift S cursor selected and bring in a circle. Rotate X90 and scale it down. Pull it over. I'll scale it a bit bigger. Let's make sure. Yeah, good. It's a pretty good position. Make a little dial here. Edit mode, F to make a face, E to extrude, pull it out. Once again, if I go that way, see the color difference? Uh, it doesn't matter though. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to press I to inset, but when your mouse is in the stage area, if it's out there, it doesn't work. I to inset, pull it in, E to extrude, and pull that out. I think I'll do that one more time, I to inset. Extrude, uh, okay, just like that. Uh, now I know I need to bevel, and I know I need object apply scale. Um, I want to bevel all these edges, but just before I do that, I'm going to put two edge loops there, and I'm going to scale in the Y and pull them out towards the edge, just like that. That's good enough. 
and edge selection. I'm gonna grab that edge, that edge, and this edge. And control B, pull back, and put one segment in there. That's good enough. And then I'm gonna, in face selection, I'm gonna uh, shift Alt and click there, and get the whole row of polys. And I'm gonna hit I twice, I, I, and pull. Gee, I almost went in the wrong direction. Just pull, so they're set, they were like that. Separate a little bit, like that. Just like that. And then I'm gonna come over here to extrude individual. I'm gonna pull my mouse down and watch them. Extrude individual, pull my mouse down, and they come out, just like that. And then without losing that selection, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Control B and pull back and put, not too much, and put one segment around there. That's good enough. Let's come out and look at that. And that's the effect that you get. And, uh, geez, you know, yeah, I guess I'll put, I'll put smoothing on, and if it looks weird to you, come over and try edge split. And that's good. And I think I'm just gonna push that right against, right against there. Okay, let's bring it over. Let's do, copy that over, do another one. Maybe and scale it down. Let me make sure that's still attached. Let's apply that edge split and let's attach those. And that would be my little fridge computer. Go wide. Doors. Takes a while. All right. Look inside the fridge. You get that. All right. We're getting there. We're almost done. I think I'll speed things up just a little bit to to finish this off. Uh, I'm going to take uh, my door, I'm going to move this to another layer, second layer, and I'm going to go shift S, cursor selected, and I'm going to bring in a cube, look at this door from some side where I see what's going on, scale on the X, I'm going to bring this down, right, let's do it this way, scale on the Z something like this scale in the Y and let me just make sure yeah that's where it would be on that side I suppose I could go back in here and I can make it longer go most of the length of the, fr of the fridge I think um, do this I think I'm gonna go E scale in the X to bring it in a bit and scale in the Z I think bring E to extrude it back okay that's too far so two around there I think that's what I wanted to do and then in edge select mode, grab the edges. That edge. And that edge. Control B, pull them back. Roll your mouse up to round them. Grab that edge and that edge. Control B, pull back. Give a couple segments just to round that whole thing off. Okay, and then I'll, um, uh, cursor selected, doesn't really matter. Shift A, and I'll bring in a cube again. Is that what I want to do? I don't know what side I'm on. Scale in the X. Scale in the Z. Yeah, okay. Scale in the Y. Okay, I start it now okay push it back in and we'll go into it face just 
comes out a bit. And what if I inset, inset like that, but then the scale in the Y, make it similar, roughly similar. Ah, that's okay. Uh, and then E the extrude, I'll bring that down. And I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and bring the whole thing in. Let's, let's just try the default beveler. Uh, I may have some problems because of that. No, 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 not if I just do bevel like that. Um, I, can, uh, I can scale in the Y axis, actually. Let's make it a little bit better like that. Let's apply that. You know, that could be just a shelf in the fridge, you know, like that. We have a couple of these. Um, we could also have a plane. Similar to what I did before. Oh, sorry. Ah, select it all. You can extrude up like that and then grab that face. You can extrude just that face up. I don't know if this is ridiculous or not. If everything would fall off that, let's move it to here. I know it sticks back in. Uh, I think that's too thick, which I do now. I could take that edge. Mm, no, I think I'll take both of these front edges here and uh, make it a bit smaller. I kind of want to punch holes in this. Always like punching holes and stuff. Let's take this face, shift D, copy it, P, make it its own selection. There it is. Scale it in the X. Scale it in the Z. Select it, E to extrude. There it is. Object apply, scale. Push it through. Let's just see what this looks like. Let's scale it to Z just to be sure. Bring it over here. We could try. I don't know what it's going to look like, but. Oh, jeez. And then, uh, did, I, did I bevel this yet? No, no, I guess not yet. No, let's not. Let's hold on. Let's hold on to those. I have a reason for that. Uh, let's apply that. Let's push that in. If I push it into there. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's a weird. That's a weird one. I was just thinking about these. Uh, let's 
to use this. Uh, let's scale shift Y. Make it smaller. I don't even feel like beveling it to tell you the truth. I just thought it as the support. of these like that one and this one and scale in the X to sort of touch the wall maybe or come very close to it and uh, shift D pull these down here you know you could go on with the various designs point across anyhow and so control J that let's join everything okay and uh, that to the door and we'll double check that we got everything now that's a pretty thick section I may have some problems with that let's bring it back all right boy fit that in there it's going to be bumping some shells I'll tell you that much uh one three let's go to control three and have a look at who is bumping into who okay we're bumping into the computer we can easily move that back yeah Take this and this, and this and this. We'll try moving them back first of all. We can also adjust their position. We do that. It's kind of cheating a bit, but we do that. Uh, that. Let's see what that's like. If I now just gently pull this out for a second, well, I guess I have to pull it up quite a bit. Let's hide that. Uh, oh, I see how that affects that. So, don't particularly like that. This one here, this one has to come down sit kind of like that all right that being the case I see what is colliding and I fix it it's colliding so I grab these and I grab these and we try and we see if this makes a ridiculous kind of I'm not going to deselect I'm just going to look like this let's move that out 
Oh, it's just that shelf is just inside. Well, in the end, here's what we do. We come out because really it's not going to make that much difference. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to have cursor selected there. And I'm going to 3D cursor there. And I'm going to rotate Z. I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to position it by hand with that thing there. Hmm. Not there. Something like this. And I'm going to shift S cursor selected. No, I'm actually going to, oh, I'm going to actually come into that. Choose a line cursor selected. I still have the 3D cursor on there, right? Rotate Z. We're going to open this up as well. A little bit like that. Pull it in a bit. I'm going to adjust it. I mean, I'm not animating this, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. That's fine, like that. And no one's going to know what happened. And so I'm going to pull this stuff back. Because it just looks better. Uh, something like that. Seems like it could close. And that is the refrigerator done. All right, and if you wanted to do an OpenGL render, you, you could just do that. All right, and that's uh, and that's what you'd get. All right, so that's it.